my name is Dr. Shruti Sharma. Just when you thought you had emissions all figured out with scopes 1, 2 and 3, along comes scope 4. You have probably heard of emissions from factories, from electricity and from suppliers. But what about emissions you can't help avoid? Enter scope 4, the superhero we didn't know we needed, but one that could change the game in carbon accounting. Now you may ask, why even bother with scope 4? Well, traditional scopes only track emissions directly related to what a company owns or buys. But what about emissions a company prevents by promoting greener alternatives? That's the question. Imagine a company making electric vehicles or renewable energy solutions. They are actively helping to avoid emissions from fossil fuel powered cars or energy sources. Scope 4 steps in here, tracking these avoided emissions and showcasing the positive climate impact of innovative companies. Now think of it this way. Traditional scopes are like only counting the calories you consume. But scope 4, it's like proudly logging the calories you avoided by choosing salad over pizza. Or okay, maybe just one slice of pizza. Now let's do a quick recap on the traditional emission categories to set the stage for scope 4. Now scope 1 are emissions directly from company like from factory stacks or delivery trucks. Scope 2 are emissions from indirect sources, for example, electricity, heating or cooling your company buys. Scope 3 emissions are everything else in your value chain. Emissions from suppliers, logistics, customer product use, even disposal. Scope 4 is all about avoided emissions. Those emissions that would have occurred if not for a company's greener alternatives. Now, currently it's unofficial, but it's making waves. Here are the main categories in the Scope 4 Club. The first one is avoided emissions. Emissions that don't happen because you offer a cleaner choice. Now think of a solar panel company reducing reliance on coal-fired electricity. The second is advertised emissions. Now these emissions are linked to increased consumption due to your marketing. Now for example, selling more gas-powered cars because of your catchy ads. Now, you are responsible for those emissions. The third one are advised emissions. Now, consulting or advising companies in high emission industries. Emissions from your influence count here. The last one is enabled emissions. Emissions from services or products that enable activities with high emissions, like providing digital solution for a mining company. Now, there are also emissions like logged in emissions. Now, emissions set in stone by your design choice. That's the long term emission impact of using carbon intensive materials or emission energy sources. Now, scope 4 is like that friend who says they helped you move when they really just held the door and watched you do all the heavy lifting. Now, let's break down the scope 4 map. Now, it's a bit like detective work. First, we identify what emissions would happen if your product didn't exist. Now, let's use electric vehicle as an example. Now, here's a step-by-step -step methodology for calculation of scope 4. The first is to define the baseline scenario. Uh, like what emissions would occur without your electric vehicle? A comparable gasoline vehicle's emissions. The second step is life cycle analysis for baseline products. Now here you have to calculate emissions for the gas vehicle across its life cycle. For example, production, fuel combustion, maintenance and disposal. The third step is life cycle analysis for your product. Now calculate the EV's emissions considering battery production, electricity use and disposal. 
the final step is to subtract the find avoided emission the difference is your avoided emission now let's look at an example a typical gas car emits around 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year if your ev powered by renewable electricity emits only 0.5 metric tons you are avoiding 4.1 tons of co2 per vehicle annually now multiply that by number of vehicles sold to get your scope for impact interesting isn't it now scope for calculations are like deciding between a salad and pizza at lunch if you go for the salad you can subtract those pizza calorie and call it a win now you may ask why isn't scope for officially recognized yet now well there's no official guidance because calculating avoided emissions is complicated standards like the greenhouse gas protocol are strict on avoiding double counting and ensuring transparency scope for needs more research and guideline to make sure companies aren't overestimating their impact or greenwashing now here's why scope for is becoming a strategic focus for leading companies now in today's esg driven world investors consumers and governments care about sustainable impact beyond just operations companies that proactively avoid emissions can attract green investors innovate in low carbon solutions and even influence regulatory framework now let's take few examples for example a company like tesla could measure and promote the avoided emissions by their evs IKEA can do this by selling solar panels and sustainable furniture. Now this will help customers avoid emissions from the less eco-friendly products IKEA has to offer. Patagonia's worn wear can be used by customers to buy second-hand clothing. They're effectively preventing emissions from new productions here. Now, scope four in corporate strategy, it's like getting credit for skipping dessert at a company lunch. You didn't eat the calories, so shouldn't you get some points for restraint? Now, what's the big takeaway with scope four? It's powerful tool for companies to showcase avoided emissions, demonstrate real world impact beyond just traditional boundaries. drive innovation and transparency in carbon accounting but remember there are still risks like inconsistent calculation and greenwashing as scope for gains traction we may see clearer guidelines making it a potential official category in the future now scope for might not be official yet but it's here to stay It's a way for companies to showcase their positive climate contribution beyond just cutting their own emissions. So if your company is innovating to help others cut carbon, Scope 4 is the badge of honor you should be wearing. Scope 4 is about making a difference beyond your own footprint. It's about helping society decarbonize and showing real climate leadership. Now whether you are in manufacturing, tech or renewable energy, Scope 4 can be a powerful tool in your climate strategy. Now do you think Scope 4 should be officially recognized? Drop your thoughts in the comments and if you are into topics like carbon accounting, sustainability or the future of green business, hit that subscribe button and let's keep the conversation around Scope 4 rolling. as we move forward scope for might become essential for the carbon conscious business world creating a new paradigm where avoiding emissions is as celebrated as reducing them thank you